My name is Michael Elliott Ward Swamp, and I'm testifying on the behalf of Jesus Christ. This is my first testimony in a very long time. The devil, because I was making these testimonies, and I'm very cautious about even making this one, uh, my hair is blue. And I just dyed it, and I didn't wash up, like, well, so, uh, it's gonna look like shit for a while. Anyway, because I was making these testimonies about the truth about Satan, he was coming after me every day. When you have a discernment of spirits, it's a knowing. You're not a human lie detector. You are a spirit truth detector. You know the truth of things. And it's just all knowing God trusts you with knowing everything. So when you hear the voice of Satan, supreme being, the one God of this world, as Jesus said, you know it. You know when it's the voice of Satan. He acts more animalistic than than he acts even like a demon. He, he'll take deep breaths out and make a He's got this twang of this godliness to his voice. There's only one voice like that, and it's got to be Satan's. Sounds like a demon. Sounds like one of the demons that were like, before time was time old. The way that he speaks so articulately and ancient, but he, he, Satan, visits me daily because I make these testimonies. I don't see any other prophet or anybody else making testimonies where they testify about every single little experience that they have with Satan. Dreams, visions, revelations. Not only am I powered by an angelic spirit, I'm one of the 144,000. God has revealed this to me himself with a seal. I'm powered by an angelic spirit, but he made me a prophet as well. And not all people that are powered by angelic spirits are prophets. And I'm an end time prophet, which is nuts. Satan knows me, visits me daily by like one on one because he knows. I, I, I'm putting, I, I have like, Almost 200 videos of just regular everyday shit I've gone through with Jesus Christ, the devil. Dreams, visions, revelations. Jesus told me if you don't have a dream, vision, or revelation to talk about, at least talk about the experiences I've gone through with you. You know, at least I grant people faith. I, I, I've gotten visions of multiple, multiple, multiple demons every single solitary second that I've been awake and in my sleep for the past five years. Before then, it was uh, seven years that I was getting visions when God, when that's why the Bible says he raises up prophets. All of a sudden, you don't know that, oh, mommy, I'm a prophet when you're 10. You know because Jesus raises you up eventually, you understand. Jesus Christ didn't know that he was the son of God unless the Virgin Mary told him when he was 10. He didn't know that. I, I'm sure that God eventually revealed it to him at the age of 28, 29. His ministry started when he was uh, 30, and he only uh, ministered for three and a half years before he was murdered. And I'm sure, I think it's around that time that he is, when he reveals it to us. I didn't know that I was a prophet until I was 29. Uh, I am 30, I'll be 31 in December, um, and it's, uh, October 15th right now, uh, so two months, yeah, so, uh, he, but he gave me all these clues beforehand, anyway, Lord, I ain't switching up this testimony, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, give it back to me, I was worried about making these testimonies because I almost died two weeks ago. Uh, for my alcoholism, I'm sure you can see me in my drunken videos. Uh, I drank alcohol to make the demon attacks go away, the demon voices, the visions, uh, and it just got out of control. I'm practically half Slavic and half Native American. I was born a eunuch, that's what the Bible says, but in earthly terms, I was born a faggot and I was sanctified into a eunuch. I had a hard life. I was, I'm powered by an angelic spirit in a sinful world. Naturally, these people are going to look weird because they're going to look like they're holy spirits that are traumatized. Um, because the devil's the god of this world. It touches everything that touches this world. Uh, and I have a, just a heavy addictive personality and I'm a coke baby. Uh, so I, I have ADHD. I have a shit load of, load of mental problems. Um, and it was killing me and God chastises those he loves and I almost died. Satan was visiting me especially the last three days that I was in this room vomiting nothing in my stomach. I couldn't even hold water down. I, I, I. I acquired an ulcer in such a way, in such a place, right here, that it was blocking my way, and nothing would go through. The, the devil specifically planted it there. I mean, that's right where your stomach starts, really. Um, and it felt like I had heartburn right here, and water would touch it, and it would come right back up. I didn't have water in my body the last two days I was in this room. Uh, I was afraid. I, stopped, I started impulsively deleting testimonies for... The happy factor of Satan to make Satan happy so that he'd stop fucking with me because he was like trying to kill me and I felt it. And he almost did. But my faith, my faith endured and I just had faith until I went to that fucking hospital and started giving me medication. I prayed the whole way there and it all went away. I've been sober for the past two weeks tomorrow. Um, I haven't had one alcoholic beverage in my system and I feel better than I have ever felt. Glory to God, hallelujah. It works in mysterious ways. 
What the hell is the testimony, Lord? No, I'm not switching it up. Ugh! He's making me switch up the testimony. I wasn't even about to do this. So Satan knows. I am so pissed right now, by the way. Satan knows that I, I'm going to talk about how I almost died, died two weeks ago. Satan knows that I know every time I make one of these fucking videos that it goes online and it's detailed truth about Satan in the end times and it's going to go all over the internet. It will never come off. Satan knows that I know this and he knows that I know he knows this. And because of it, um, I have a very personal relationship with Satan. Jesus told me two years ago when I got a vision of him, Michael, the archangel and Satan in the living room that, uh, I made God really happy with the way that I was passionate toward my disgust toward Lucifer, and I felt it through my discernment. I was like, you're disgusting. Humans you, humans go to hell, most of them, because you, and they have to pr practically even work to get their way to heaven. Even though salvation's a, grace is a free gift, you still gotta work, which means you gotta suffer and repent. Um, and uh, uh, you were created in heaven. God gave you everything, favored you more than everybody else, and you were ungrateful for it. And Jesus told me, Mike, you remind me a lot of Lucifer. Before he fell from heaven. The difference is you have nothing and are grateful. He had everything was ungrateful. Satan, Lucifer was his favorite angel. Why? They're all perfected in heaven. Every single angel. But they're different. Their personalities are different. Their mannerisms are different. There are little things about them that are just more beautiful. The way that he would open soda cans with his teeth. Crack, crack eggs in, on his head when he's making eggs. Like, uh, there's these little things that Satan would do. There's this weird ass tree that nobody favored. No one even looked at twice. But Satan would choose to go fly up into that tree and read his little book. And God was giving him glory from afar. But he was so focused on getting glory from all the other angels, he didn't even notice it. Satan's on his way to me, and I feel it right now. When I talk personally about shit like this, about Satan, he, he'll come to me. Protect me from his ass. Um. So, the moment Jesus told me this, I knew it through my discernment. Satan heard that the moment you told me this, he didn't know that until you just said that. But now he knows it. Now he's going to be pissed. Now he's about to be jealous and envious to shit. You got to put a leech on him and you got to protect me. Two minutes later, he was with me. Um, Go look at it. It's in my testimonies. I got to really uh, redo them because there's a lot of shit missing from those testimonies. And ugh, I, uh, I said, uh, two minutes later, Satan was with me and he has not left me. It's very personal, very, very, very personal. Because now Lucifer's looking at Satan's looking at me as if, like, oh, I'm about to go get thrown into the burning lake like a piece of trash within a moment of minutes at this point in his eternal mind, and you are about to practically take my place as God's favorite angel. Lucifer knows he's been cursed. He knows what he lost. He knows that he's angry. He knows he was cursed. He knows he's about to get thrown away like trash into the burning lake. He knows it, and now he's looking at me as someone that God compared him to. So it is. Devout personal. He, it, that's why he visits me daily. All the shit I put online. The two witnesses are people that witness to this shit. And they witness to it daily. I don't think I'm a witness. How could I be a witness? There are 7 billion people on this planet. And I am some nobody in the middle of Wisconsin. They'll be dressed in sackcloth and, ash, sackcloth and fucking ashes. I got this shit from a, a rummage sale. Rummage sale. Hand me down from a friend. Hand me down from a friend just last night. And they're real nice, actually. These slippers. Uh, I bought my socks and underwears, but what that what the Bible means is by sackcloth and ashes is just rags, hand me downs, poor shit. Um, uh, I don't think I'm a witness. It, it couldn't even be two and seven billion, so I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. God has been talking. I'm very weird, weirdly strange to the one true God in Jesus Christ. Um, so, so Satan was trying to kill me. I started trying to make him happy by randomly deleting testimonies. Randomly, I fell on two personal testimonies. Two prophetic dreams of warning that were personal about people in this neighborhood. And uh, the neighborhood I'm in, there were personal prophecies. And it was Jesus uh, convicting me of these these prophecies personal to stay away from these people because they are enemies of God. Um, so I, I'm flipping through my bata, my bata, whatever the fuck you want to call it, on the fucking YouTube. And I click. I, I fell on a personal testimony out of the two I got. Personal prophetic dreams of warning. And there, I've only really had two of them. I delete it. I'm still really sick. I'm like, okay, Satan, I want to make you happy because I, I can't I can't deal with the sickness no more. I felt like I was dying because I was. Randomly, bam. Second dream of prophetic dream of warning. Delete it. Maybe God takes what the devil, devil makes for bad, makes for his good. So maybe there's a reason for that. Anyway, um, Satan was visiting me the last two days before when I didn't have no water in my system. He was with me and he sounded like a dog. An evil dog that was very excited. He was making these 
<sighs> but when you have this twang, twang of God to your voice, this godliness, sounds like a regular demon. The, de the different, and he sounds like one of those demons that speak super, super articulately, and they speak like this, very kind of hyper, but, but very well. No, not not even Satan does that. But when you take one of those tone, demon tones of voices, and you put a twang of God, godliness on it, supreme means one. There's only one of those voices. It's Satan, and he acts more animal than he, he even identifies as animal. That's why Jesus calls him the beast. He, he identifies more as animal. He makes animalistic noises. <laughs> He'll growl like he, whenever he speaks, Michael, by the blood of the lamb. When he's saying these things, yeah. It's like, it sounds like he's purring in his throat as he speaks. Um, uh, it's nuts. Uh, he visited me once since I've been sober, since I... I got cured from this ulcer from the medication the doctors gave me about five days ago. I've been out of the hospital for 12 days. Hadn't had a drink in about 12, 13 days. Uh, this, it's all glory. All glory belongs to God. All of it goes to God because this has nothing to do with my free will. Jesus knew that I had no self-control. They're giving me medication right now that makes me completely and utterly repulsed to alcohol if I even think about it. If it were to touch my lips, I couldn't even swallow it. It made me throw up if it was my mouth. So it has nothing to do with no free will of mine. It has to do with this medication, the glory of God. I have no self-control. I, could, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it on myself, by myself. I would have died. Um, the last two days he was with me, he was with me constantly. When Satan, because of my discernment, it's a knowing. And it comes through every sense that we have. So when really, I don't get little pussy bitch demon sent to me anymore. I get you very powerful, powerful fucking demon sent to me. The more powerful the demon, the demon can't even hide its rankness. The more powerful the demon, you will get, just like Ed and Lorraine Warren said, you will get powerful, powerful evil smells in the room. Um, <laughs> The last two weeks, I went on a drinking binge for about two weeks, two weeks ago. So it was about September 15th that started. Uh, where I was, I stopped eating. I just, start, just kept drinking. And the devil was trying to finish me off, but my faith remained. And faith will get you through everything. It's amazing. So, this is what had happened. Uh, these demons would enter the room, and I mean, I was smelling every rank smell that existed. I was there. There are many forms of rot that you smell from demon spirits. I mean, if an old lady dies in a wet basement or rots there for two weeks in the middle of summer in Florida, it's gonna smell differently than the way that a uh, a uh, turkey. No, 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 no. A cow dies in Wisconsin in the middle of a hot, like, 88 degree summer. It's gonna smell different. The rot is gonna smell different. Um, and it's gonna smell nastier with a human body, probably. But rot smells different is my point. Powerful demons will show up to me. They will come to me. And you wanna know what? I, God will convict me. I'll either, the, the demon spirit will be so powerful that I will, will be very, very vocal. It will speak very, very clearly. It will speak very, very loud. Um, it will giggle. If it's an imp, it will be more obnoxious. It will giggle. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> I've, I've heard those ones before Th that's recent i mean within the last like two months i've been hearing uh imp dead do that but they're very fucking obno obnoxious so they're not only vocal but they'll be doing some fucked up shit around the room it's like they'll give angels like the <laughs> like the heebie-jeebies because of something weird that they'll do and the demon will laugh <laughs> <laughs> they're so seductive they li they're such liars that they lie even in the way that they speak especially imps um i've smelled large amounts of warm blood i know what it would smell like if someone got their throat cut in this room like a 300 pound dude out of pure muscle got their throat cut from ear to ear and blood out on the floor and died like and i just had to sit in this room in the middle of spring for seven minutes I know it would smell like large amounts of warm blood. I've smelled burning sulfur, and I know that those demons were specifically handpicked by Satan that were in hell at the moment. The spirit sent up directly to me because it foretayed in something that it wanted it to fuck with me with, with Satan. The ones that smell like burning sulfur, a lot of the time, Satan himself will smell, when he enters the room, he'll smell like burning sulfur at first until he, he, gets, he gets in my face. And <sighs> because he identifies more with beast, he will make animalistic noises a lot to me to reveal that he's there. He doesn't even like me knowing that he's with me anymore like after the power of god overwhelmed him again and i did not die five days ago when he visited me and god would let me understand it, it was the first time i had a like really hardcore prophetic conversation with him since i almost died and i i, I can say it's a frequency you know like when the tv is on but the volume's all the way down and it falls asleep with the dvd on and the dvd menus on you wake up in the middle of the night you can sense that the tv is on even though you can't hear it it's like that frequency demon spirits the more powerful they are Absolutely, right here. There's a demon right here. 
the frequency is loud and it like moves around my head and I'll know that the demon is there in perfect faith. I'll, I'll say, get away from me, demon, all by myself in this room with no camera on. Get away from me, demon, in Jesus' name. And the demon will go, no. I don't know how they speak. They don't got vocal cords, voice boxes, lungs, breath. I think, you know, Spiritus Santos, like they say in Catholic shit. I think that Spiritus means breath. Uh, and I think when we die, the part where we use our breath in our voice box, I think that is our spirit. That's what comes out of our body. That's what I believe. I mean, that's what you use. And if these things can talk without vocal cords or voice box or lungs, it's got to be the breath. It's got to be the breath. The Bible says Jesus, God breathed the breath of life into Adam and Eve, you know? I think it's our spirit. Anyway, I should be writing uh, encyclopedias. This is my point. Um, God is real. He loves you perfectly. Let your faith remain. Don't ever doubt God. If you doubt God, I don't even know how it works i don't know how he thinks about it i don't understand i don't even know why faith is so important to him but it is the most utmost important thing to him I, I i don't know god perfectly i know him better than most people on this planet i'm certain of that and i'm not saying that boasting style i'm just saying that because it's just straight up fucking true i know him better than i i know that most people know him the one true god and he allows me to because i give him all the credit and all the glory and i love him legitimately just because of who he is i tell him all the time i don't serve you because you're god i serve you because of who you are if satan had your standards you had satan's i would serve satan if i had to suffer and go to hell as long as you were there i would rather go to hell than in heaven without you because i love him that much and i like i know you're you're god i have these weird conversations with him and because of these things i know this is why he's opened up to me and come to me the way that he has the more you prove yourself to God, the more he'll prove himself to you. The more you look out for God, the more he'll look out for you. I remember being in love with him one day when I was like 25 and I said, Abba, you're the one true God. You're the only one that there is. It's got to be fucking lonely being you. So I know that there's probably little that I could do, but if you ever, 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 and I was being legit in faith, this was about when I was 25, six years ago almost. I said, if you ever want to talk to me about anything, your loneliness, the, the fact that you're the only supreme being i'm so grateful that you have the holy spirit in jesus but still it's still got to be really lonely because even they can't under and this is another thing satan is envious and this is why he comes to me he understands that i have a devout lowest relationship to the one through god jesus christ and the holy spirit that lives within us and now i have a devout relationship with him and he can't help with his like impulsiveness to come and visit me and because of my discernment i know he's with me and i'll start getting into these hardcore personal detailed conversations with him that has to do with him his history and me and god it ain't me and god's relationship it ain't me and satan's it's me satan's and god's relationship they have their own personal relationship but when it comes to me i don't have just a relationship with god i have a relationship with god and satan i don't have a relationship with just satan satan and god so this is why he visits me they tried to kill me uh and um satan came to me about five days ago and um he didn't even reveal he was with me because he, he can't take scorn. He can't he can't admit the fact that he lost. Uh, I forgot my point. But anyway, I think God wants me to wrap this video up, even though you should just give me my point. Hurry, please. Forgive me for complaining. I complained less than, and I, I've caught myself and asked and repented real quick when it came to complaining, bitching at God or saying his name in vain, which is a big deal for me. Just because I'm so grateful I'm not dying. Jeez, Lord. <laughs> but uh, I I feel healthier than I have ever felt. Jesus saved me. He again, again, again. But the end is near. I think the whole world's gonna understand it in the next couple months, especially after the election. <laughs> make sure that you vote, and make sure you don't vote for Biden. I'm not telling you to vote for Trump. Vote for fucking Mickey Mouse, but don't vote for Biden. He, with my discernment, I'm telling you, people have gotten visions of people getting visions of Jesus, of, uh, of Jesus Christ. He comes to them and tells them, this is going to be your new president, your new king, getting visions of Donald Trump at the sound of the last Trump, the, the prophecy about Cyrus in Isaiah. It's a very obvious Donald Trump's quick at the mouth. No one's perfect. He's stupid. He thinks he's better than women. Well, well he's ignorant. He thinks he's better than women. He talks foolishly, but he don't lie. He confesses the name of Jesus and he prays before, before going into debates and type shit like that. Um, the last president that confessed the name of Jesus was Kennedy and got killed. Uh, when Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were going against each other, I didn't vote. I'm not going to be a part of a country that I legitimately not only love but respect that's been taking care of me with my SSI for the last 12 years because I'm so crazy I can't hold the job down. 
And I'm not going to contribute to the downfall of it by not knowing what the fuck I'm doing. I'm pretty sure you've never voted. Uh, yeah, I haven't ever voted because I'm not some ignoramus that's going to fucking just start voting for someone just to say I voted. And I'm not going to vote selfishly. If I wanted to vote selfishly, I would have voted for Hillary Clinton. It would have been guaranteed I would keep my SSI and my food stamps would go up. Why wouldn't I? But I, 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 I love God and I love this country and I'm, I'm not going to vote for myself. If you are going to vote for you and your family, that's irresponsible to the country. You vote for what's best for the country, for everybody as a whole, which, which is possible. You know, lesser is who evils. So when the election's going on, I'm talking to God very close with them at this point. I'm about 26, almost 27. And I'm like, God, I'm like, okay, who would you want to vote? He said, Mike, go back and think about my word. Romans 8, I think it is. Uh, the people that I put in positions of authority got put there for a reason. Blah, 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 this and that. Donald Trump's racist because he wanted to keep illegal immigrants out. So what ignoramuses would think is he wants to keep illegal uh, immigrants out. That means he's racist against Mexicans. Uh, and the blacks are like, well, if he's racist against Mexicans, he's not going to like black people either. No, he's not racist. Donald Trump's smart. He knows that illegal immigrants are not raised the same way we are. Would we want to take 100,000 North Koreans and put them in our country with how violently that they live? No, they are raised in such poverty, Mexicans in Mexico, that they rape, pillage, steal, and murder to get what they need for their families and their stomachs. And Donald Trump knows that. He's not racist. He is cautious of people that come from countries that are in such poverty like, Mex like Mexico is. He doesn't look at Latinos that way. He doesn't look at uh, Mexican Americans as, uh, or Latino Americans as, um, as people that are raised in Mexico. He looks at them as, as people that are raised in such poverty that it makes them criminals and it can spread like wildfire the same way the Bible says spring, sin spreads. So don't hang around with sinners. You shall not eat with sinners because you, you'll turn into that sinner. If you spend time around them, the Bible says clearly feed them and give them something to drink, uh, confess to them the word, tell them to repent. But don't go to Disneyland with them. Don't go to the house for a barbecue. Don't let your kids hang out with theirs. Like, anyway, it's it drives me crazy. And then Joe Biden is sitting there. They got this commercial of him holding a Bible behind a podium in a church. I wanted to, I, I would spit at him if I saw him in real life. Reading the word of God, it was a very, very basic statement. For anybody that went to church for more than a year, they wouldn't have to look up and read it straight from the Bible. Like, uh... Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his, he took his only begotten son and, and gave him up uh, to take on the sins of the world so that uh, if you just believe in him, you see everlasting life. I'm paraphrasing. I, I'm irritated right now, but he's reading the scripture from the word of God behind a podium in a church. So not only is he a hypocrite and a liar and a manipulator, but now he's a blasphemer and I'm just about to go rally. And if it's between him and Trump, let's there two evils again. But not even let's there two evils. Donald Trump is a, is a, person I wouldn't even want to be friends with, but he's definitely a good president. He doesn't lie. Everything he says he's going to do, he does. And of course, he's going to drop the whole wall idea because now everybody thinks he's a part of the KKK because he wants to make America safe. I mean, Israel, God's chosen people did the same thing to put a wall around Israel. <coughs> oh. That sounded last Trump. I'm so irritated. And you want to know what Donald Trump oppressed me. But during the election, I mean, it's looking like Hillary's going to win with all these ads, with all these Democrats. And then all of a sudden, Donald Trump takes it away right before he wins. He, God speaks to me because God is with me on the day of the election. said, Michael, the reason Donald Trump is blowing Hillary Clinton out of the water is because this is who I want in office. That, that scripture in Romans, I think it's Romans 8, keep, kept, kept popping up in my head. And it was, it was my conviction from, from the Holy Spirit. And it was, um, whoever is put in the places of authority that they are put in, God puts them there for a reason. It's in Romans somewhere. Whoever has the places of authority that they have, God puts them in that place of authority for a reason, whether it's to test that person or the people that will be around that person to be tested. Therefore, cops, all that. Okay, the divine revelation is just spewing out of my mouth. But God works in mysterious ways. I am alive and well, and I am sober. I can't believe I'm sober. And I'm very grateful. Repent, the end is near. Read the Bible to get to know God. You go out of your way to get to know God. He will go out of his way to get to know you. Repentance is vital to being a Christian. Don't think that you can say, I accept you as my Savior, Lord Jesus, and go on practicing sin, and then you'll just get into heaven because you are sadly mistaken. And you want to know what hell is going to be infinitely worse for those people than for blasphemers or for, no, 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 not blasphemers. Hell is going to be worse for those people than the people that are lazy and be like, well, um, if I got to repent, 
that's too hard. I'm not going to do that. But when I go to hell, at least I'll have the company. Like, it, hell's going to be worse for the people that, that um, think that they, they can manipulate God and hide things from him and say, okay, I accept you as my savior with my words, but I'm just going to go on practicing sin. Uh, but the people that ignore the reality of hell, especially if they're convicted of it, it's going to be worse for those people than evil people that are traumatized in such anger and evil like Hitler. Hell is going to be worse for them. Um, uh, you get what you deserve. The law of reaping and sowing is inevitable. You guys got to try this. I'm telling you. Get somewhere where you're alone. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Understand, just believe that he's really right there. Get on your knees and say, look, God, that weird, crazy looking faggot with the blue hair named Mike told me to get on my knees in a room and talk to you about anything. I need you to prove yourself that you're there. I need you to prove it to me. I'm too much of an agnostic. I need you to prove it. Please show me how much you love me the way that this weird, crazy faggot with the blue hair tells me he, that you love me. Please, I ask in your name, Lord Jesus, whatever that means. You're not going to know what it means. So just say whatever that means and humble yourself. Be honest with God, but speak to him in perfect faith as if he is right next to you. Because let me tell you, whether you want to believe it or not, he is. Uh, amen. Just do that once a day until he gives you a sign. But then follow that conviction and continue to do it and ask him more questions. If you go out of your way to want to get to know God, he will prove himself to you. The more he proves himself to me, to you, you will realize he loves you. When you realize he loves you, it, you won't be able to stop praying. And when you can't stop praying, you will abound upward and you will become wiser than your own understanding. You will grow closer to God than anything. And the more you go closer to God, the more you'll love him, the more you'll love him, the more you'll respect and have a reverence for him, the more you'll respect and have a reverence for him, the more he'll trust you with knowledge, with wisdom about himself, personal knowledge, personal knowledge about himself. It's crazy how I keep thinking there's not more that I could get to know about you. There's not more. I could, and I mean, I said that for the first time seven years ago, and it's just, I keep breaking through ceilings with them. It's nuts. God is weird. He's <laughs> super weird, and he's crazy. He's like Wishmaster. You ask him, Lord Jesus, help me get over this alcohol, and he almost lets the devil kill you with an ulcer. He's so weird, but it's beautiful because he always surprises you. That's a cool thing, and you can perfectly trust him, so you know, even though he almost lets it, Lord Jesus, you, you've made me a prophet, so let the wisdom abound beyond measure. Just, oh, so I know more about Incubi than other demons, so teach me more about Incubi. I ask in your name, Lord Jesus. An hour later, he lets a demon go into my mouth. And then I touched myself all pervertedly in a weird, weird way. It wasn't even me. It was this demon that I felt go into my mouth. I even make a testimony about it. And it's like caught on camera. Because the video, first video I made was, y'all, I don't know what the fuck happened. But this demon went into my mouth and God let me feel it. And I just started asking for divine wisdom about Incubi. But I felt this demon like an asshole. It was like my mouth. I was saying, go away from me, demon, in the name of Jesus. But when I said go, this demon spirit... And I felt my lips stretch open without my free will. And it went into my mouth. And I felt this lump in my throat. And this nigga went all the way down into my shit. Into my stomach. I just said the word nigga, but sorry. I was raised in the ghetto. I was raised in the fourth worst city in the United States, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So all my friends are black. And I just came out of a black ministry. I was the white dude in every fucking black place that I ever went to, especially Kosciuszko Middle School, I was the only white person in 8th grade, the only white one there. I've been raised in the ghetto my whole life. Anyway, this is my point. Um, so he didn't make me ejaculate or nothing because God, it was God's will that he let this demon go into me. So it wasn't, I didn't ejaculate or nothing because God would never would have let that happen. But I mean, I'm touching my erect penis underneath a blanket. All my cats felt weird as hell around me the whole next day. Jody, Andy, and Aziz, they all, they didn't even want to look at me. They felt awkward, and I can sense it with my discernment. Um, and I said, well, God, this is what this was your will. You want to teach me about this incubus, this, incu this demon that was in the basement all the time that I didn't even, it would, it, it would get irritated when I ever went into its area, which was right, right next to the fridge in the laundry room in the basement, and it would go, it was one of those demons where the, the tone was just, it would make noises. Um, if I would get too close to its area, it would try to, like, scare me away. But I'm not afraid of them no more. So anyway, and I would pray in that area. <laughs> I think that's why he really hated me. Anyway, um, the next day, the next morning, I said, Abba, okay, you taught me about it. Let me testify. After I testify, pull the demon out of me because there ain't no reason to have it in me no more. I got the revelation. I already made this testimony. Go look it up. It's a demon goes into my mouth, an answer to a demon going into my mouth. Uh, uh. 
I testified about it. I asked God, well, if I felt the demon go in me, then I could feel it come out of me. I want you to let me focus and let me feel the demon come out of me. He let me feel it, and it does not feel good when demons are being pulled out of you. Uh, you start burping, you'll get really sal salvic like in your mouth, and you will eventually get nauseated. The more powerful the demon spirit, the more nauseated you'll get, and sometimes not even angels can pray it out. That's why you have to have an anointed pastor. Pastors are more anointed because God looks at human pastors as his children. He looks at angels as best friends. Therefore, a human pastor will have way more favor from God praying an angel out of a demon out of a human being than even a legion of angels. Um, he uses this all differently. Repent the end is near. It's vital to be a Christian. I'm sorry for anybody offended by using the word nigga, but I'm ghetto the same way that you are. So <laughs> I, I, I'm not racist. I just, I was raised in ghetto circumstances. Um, and you want to know what, from where I come from, white people and black people are equally as ghetto. They're all best friends. If they're, if they come from Milwaukee, they know each other well. And black people call white people nigga, and white people call black people nigga. I don't know where you come from, but I come from Milwaukee, Milltown, and this is how it is here. Um, so please don't be offended. Uh, especially because I'm pro-Donald Trump. Really don't be offended. Don't think that like I'm racist because I'm pro-Donald Trump either. Joe Biden is evil. Vote for whoever you want to. Just don't vote for Biden, because he's evil. He's going to usher in the Antichrist, or he is the Antichrist, and Barack Obama ushered him in already. And they are pro-everything, so... God bless. The end is near. Repent. Settle to be a Christian. Go to your way to get to know God. He'll go to his way to get to know you. Pray against and for these videos so that people have at least a discernment of truth, even if they don't deserve it. Um, and yeah, the world's going to change for the worst. So get your eyes focused on what you should and turn your eyes away from worthless things. God bless.